Howdy, I'm NASA astronaut Bob Behnken, and I'm out this summer at the uh, Desert Rats uh, testing activities here in Arizona. We're a little bit north of Flagstaff. We have a, a set of modules set up to simulate a deep space habitat, including a hygiene module, an airlock, and the deep space habitat itself. Right now, we're standing inside of the living area, which is on top of the deep space habitat. We call it the loft. As a floor that uh, if you look around you can maybe see where my clothes are or food is and things like that. Uh, this is the, the part where we would eat dinner or maybe do some relaxing. Upstairs is a series of uh, little bunk stations where we would actually sleep. Uh, we spent a couple of nights here until uh, we got a heavy rainstorm and learned that uh, the deep space habitat isn't uh, quite ready to handle uh, heavy thunderstorms here in the uh, Arizona desert, but uh, we were able to spend the night here nonetheless. Uh, one of the other things that we're doing is actually driving around the uh, deep space rovers and simulating geology that we might perform on an asteroid or on the moon or on Mars. So we do that during the day when we're not sleeping in this uh, habitat. Uh, today I've got uh, some questions from uh, Mr. Higgs physics class in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. I've asked, uh, answered questions for this group uh, a couple of times now and so uh, I want to make sure everybody doesn't uh, or gets their question answered and the first one comes from Lauren. And Lauren asked, do you have to sit the whole time that the rover is moving? And that's a, that's a really good question, Lauren, and the, uh, the answer is we usually sit. There's actually a seat belt to buckle us into the rover, but sometimes, just based on the things that we're crossing over, how bumpy the rocks are or the angle that the rover sits on the side of a hill, we actually do need to stand up and potentially look out the windows. Uh, we have to do that very carefully. The rover moves really slowly, so it's a, it is safe to stand up from time to time, especially when it's moving so slowly. If we were going at the fastest speed, we would want to make sure that we were sitting down inside that rover. Uh, the next question that I have is from Victor. And Victor asks, does the Desert Rats program readily associate with other NASA programs? And Victor, that's a pretty, uh, pretty complicated question, but I will say here at Desert Rats, we have nine NASA centers represented. We have scientists from all over the country. Um, one of our geologists is actually from uh, Goddard Space Flight Center and is actually coming out and participating with the primarily uh, Johnson Space Center folks who are here out in the desert. But we have a scientist uh, from all around NASA and all around the country as well. Uh, Carolyn, who's uh, one of the geologists also on our group, is actually not a NASA person at all. She's a United States Air Force officer who is a physicist at uh, uh, Kirtland Air Force Base, and she's uh, with us performing some of the geology as well. So we participate with NASA centers all over the country, as well as scientists and engineers all over the country for Desert Rats. The next question I have is from Alex, and uh, Alex asks, what are the perks of sending humans into space instead of just robots? And I think, uh, Alex, we get asked that question uh, quite a bit, and uh, you're exactly right. We want to make sure that when we send humans and we send people, that we're not doing something that uh, robots couldn't do easier or cheaper or more safely. Uh, but there are a lot of places where you actually need to make decisions and look at the, uh, the choices that are presented in front of you and, and make a good choice. And if we were to rely on those robots sending their information back to, uh, to Houston or back to the Earth at some point, we could wait a really long time uh, before we collected enough information to make simple decisions that humans could make. The rovers that have been uh, roving around Mars for the last several years uh, the activities that they've performed are great and wonderful and they've provided an enormous amount of science, uh, but a, a team of uh, astronauts with uh, just a, a small group of simple tools could have accomplished that science in a matter of weeks instead of a matter of years that the ro those robots uh, on Mars are actually providing. And so uh, it's a really good question and we want to make sure that the robots and the humans uh, work together, if you will, uh, to perform the best science and conduct the best missions that we can. Sometimes it's best to send a robot, but sometimes it's best to send somebody who can uh, think about what they're doing and uh, make real quick decisions if that's what's required. Great questions by uh, Mr. Higgs' uh, physics class there in uh, Pennsylvania, and it was great to share some time with uh, you guys while I was out here at Desert Rats. Have a good day.